Um, and so, what, what, what's your title? Like special advisor. I work for the chief of staff, like directly. Oh, you report to the chief of staff. Yeah. So, author is the chief of staff to Guzman. Yeah, Isabella Guzman. So she's basically a spokesperson for Biden. Yeah. She's indirectly campaigning for Biden. Yes. Yeah. Administrator Guzman said, basically, are are doing, going to these critical battleground states yeah. to basically campaign for President yeah. Biden. Anytime we go, we try to visit with a member of Congress if they're a Democrat. The okay. White House was like, yes, go. Don't invite the other senator because he's a Republican. Yeah. And don't invite the two members of Congress because they're Republicans. Uh, there's a guy named Jeff Seitz. Hey. I mean, by getting Zep, Jeff's sign off, you're getting the president to sign off. People call him like the second most powerful person in Washington. Most of the time it's like, hey, whatever the size this guy says is what the president says. Who would you say is the most powerful person at the White House? Jeff. Jeff is the most powerful person at the White House. Other than like the president. No. There's probably like five or six people that work for him. Joe Biden, and I've worked for him for Forever. 30 years. Uh, one of them is Ron Clay. Ron worked for uh, Biden when he was like a senator. And there's a guy named Steve Rochetti. He's like a senior advisor at the White House. Anita Dunn. Yeah, she's a senior advisor at the White House. Gene Sperling. He's, like a, he's an econ uh, economics guy. Oh, his sister. Biden's sister. She like runs the Biden Foundation. They're the people that run his different do you, would you If they put it on his desk saying, like, yeah. hey, we think it's the problem. Yeah. So the, I feel like Barack Obama's still very, like, involved. No, he is. Yeah. Hillary was being interviewed. Mm -hmm. And she said, I still talk to the White House every day. She has people that are, like, super close to her that are still, um, like senior people in the White House. So who is she talking to in the White House? Probably Neera Tandon. I hope Hillary is still involved behind the scene. Cause no, she is. Still Not a week goes by without a news headline about potential medical supply shortages, threats to our infrastructure, or power grid. And you remember what they pulled during the last pandemic. Certain medications were mysteriously out of stock. No way will I ever let that happen again. In today's unpredictable world, it's all about being prepared for who knows what they have in store for the next pandemic. Our friends and supporters at The Wellness Company have designed this unique prescription-based medical emergency kit that is packed with eight potentially life-saving prescription-only medications, including z pack and Ivermectin, which I used myself while out on the road and starting to feel a bit under the weather. Health is everything, and this is a great opportunity to order a Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit. The Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit stands ready to treat over 30 common ailments, ensuring you'll have access to vital medications when you need them most. And now save $45 per kit when you order using the code OMG. Get ready to write this down. Get your Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit at twc.health slash OMG. That's twc.health slash OMG. That's twc.health slash OMG. And save $45 per kit today when you use code OMG. Meet the newest subject in our latest investigation into the D.C. swamp, Tyler Robinson. Tyler is a special advisor working at the Small Business Administration. You're, you're in politics, right? Or, yeah. Okay. How long have you been in politics? Uh, since like 2012. And so what, what's your title? Like Special advisor. I work for the chief of staff. Like, directly. Oh, you report to the chief of staff. Yeah. What's the person? His name is Arthur. Okay, it's a guy. Arthur. Yeah. Arthur. So Arthur is the chief of staff to Guzman, and then you report to Arthur. Yeah. Tyler explains he reports directly to a man named Arthur Plews, the chief of staff in the office of the administrator at the SBA, who reports to SBA administrator Isabel Guzman. Guzman was sworn in as administrator of the SBA by Kamala Harris in 2021. Tyler says he can't do anything overtly political, but confirms the SBA is indirectly campaigning for Biden and, quote, helping retain members of Congress to get reelected. You're politically appointed. Yes. The, so the administrator is the most traveled member of the cabinet. Like, pretty much every week. Me a boss. Yeah. Okay. She, pretty much every week she goes somewhere in the country nice. um, and, like, talks to small business owners and gets on local news and says, like, wow. this is what the Biden economy That's is awesome. doing for you guys in this area. So she's basically a spokesperson for Biden. Yeah. So like, she can tell Biden's we can't like she Yeah, we can tell their accomplishments. She can't like go on stage and be like, or go on there and just be like, hey, Joe, vote for Joe Biden. Like, that's illegal. So she's indirectly yes, yeah, like yeah. campaigning for Biden. Yeah, yeah. 
She's indirectly campaigning for Biden. Yes, yeah. But like, yeah, there's just certain rules for like political appointees yeah. and what we're allowed to say and like do. You um, and your boss? Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Isabella Guzman. She's from California. We're going to this area in Pennsylvania, which is a huge swing state. It's a huge swing state. Yeah, Got the, it. you know, a state that Biden needs to win to win the presidency. Ah. Uh, and we're not saying, hey, go vote for Joe Biden, but we're saying, hey, because we passed this law and no, this law that no Republicans voted for, mm-hmm. uh, that only Democrats voted for and passed, yeah. you know, we are, like, at that time, that trip, we announced that we, the administration was investing $5 million. This was going directly yeah. to that community. So uh, why can't you help Biden? There's like a, it's called the Hatch Act. Unofficially campaigning for Biden and other elected Democratic officials to small businesses across the nation is a potential violation of the Hatch Act. The Hatch Act mandates that civil service employees in the executive branches of the federal government abstain from any active part in political campaigns. Several members of the Biden administration have already received warnings from the Office of Special Counsel and Watchdog Groups for violations of the Hatch Act, including Housing and Urban Development Secretary Marsha Fudge, former White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, and former White House Chief of Staff Ron Klain. Tala describes Guzman as a spokesperson for Biden and as the most traveled member of the cabinet as she uses her position to help get Democrats like Montana Senator John Tester reelected. Administrator Guzman said basically are, are doing, going to these critical battleground states yeah. to basically campaign for President yeah. Biden. Anytime we go, we try to visit with a member of Congress if they're a Democrat. But Why do you need a member of Congress to it go Just because then we can help them get reelected as well. So we're going to Montana because Senator Tester, is a, he's the Democratic senator from Montana. Okay. Like he's in a tougher election race. And okay. that's like a seat we need in the Senate to uh, maintain a majority. Like if he loses. If he loses Montana, it's harder. Screwed. Yeah, it's harder yeah. to win somewhere else. We all, like as an office, we're going. Okay. And the White House was like, yes, go. Invite Senator Tester. Don't invite the other senator because he's a Republican. And yeah. don't invite the two members of Congress because they're Republicans. So you, the White House authorized you guys to go yeah. campaign for this senator. Yeah. What kind of campaigns do you, does the SBA run to help Biden? I mean, we can't do anything like overtly political. Like, we can't send out, like, an email to small businesses like, vote Joe Biden. But you- Tyler Robinson continues to describe the inner workings of the Biden White House by mentioning Jeff Zients, the White House chief of staff. Tyler states, quote, by getting Jeff's sign-off, you're getting the president's sign-off, labeling him as the second most powerful person in Washington, D.C. Down the line, it's up to, like, the president and the chief of staff. The chief of staff to the president approved yeah. it. Uh, there's a guy named Jeff Zients. Jeff Seitz? Seitz. Within the White House, there's something called the Office of Cabinet Affairs. Office of Cabinet Affairs. Yeah, okay. and so they, they're, these re- names. Yeah. <laughs> they're responsible for like overseeing all the different cabinet agencies, like cabinet secretaries. And your boss is one of the cabinet yeah. secretaries. So, so they tell us it went all the way up, basically, for yeah. approval. So Jeff is the final approver. Uh, I mean, I guess it would be the president, but in reality, it's probably Jeff, yeah. So the president also has to sign off on this. Yeah. I mean, by getting Zeph, Jeff's sign off, you're getting the president to sign off. Oh, this Jeff guy's powerful. Yeah. Realistically, they are, people call him like the second most powerful person in Washington. <gasps> because most of the time it's someone that's close to the president. Uh-huh. And like who has always been with them and like their tr- most trusted advisor. Uh-huh. So like generally most of the time it's like, hey, whatever the size this guy says is what the president says. So Jeff can sign off on things without the president. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine if you like ask people who the White House chief of staff was, yeah. I doubt anybody outside of Washington to see. What Why is he so stealth? This is kind of a role. Because that gives him more power. Yeah. More like ability to do things, get things done. Yeah. Because if he, if, I mean, if everyone like, knows about him, if then... you follow politics, you know who like the chief of staff is. But like the average American wouldn't know who he is. But he, is he appointed or elected? He's appointed. He's appointed by who? Biden. Biden. Yeah. Tyler even goes so far as to state that Jeff Zients runs the White House. When he was 35 years old, Fortune magazine named Zients in his 40 under 40 list with a net worth of $149 million. He has held many corporate and government positions, including being on the board of Facebook and the chief operating officer of DGB Enterprises, 
a holding company for several companies. He's not elected by American people, American voters, but he's appointed by Biden. Yeah. And he can basically be the acting president. Not the acting president, but like he runs the White House. He runs the White House. Like he's responsible for everybody that works there. Uh -huh. He like sets, helps set the, pres set the president's agenda. Uh -huh. Like controls what gets yeah. said, all that stuff. Is, he, is Jeff more powerful than Harris? In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. And is Jeff more powerful than Kamala? Like, not legally, but... In practice, he is. Yeah. Who would you say is the most powerful person at the White House? Jeff. Jeff? Yeah. Jeff is the most powerful person at the White House. Other than, like, the president. No. So all buck stops, like, like, all roads lead to Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff and the president, yeah. Okay. Recently, special counsel Robert Hur characterized Biden in his final report as showing diminished faculties and faulty memory, in which Biden did not remember even within several years when his son Beau died. This report and Biden's general demeanor compel many Americans to speculate that there must be other people in charge and making the most important decisions for the American people. Tyler Robinson has a lot to say about Biden's shadow advisors that were never selected or voted for by Americans and lists them directly by name, stating there are five or six people who are Biden's closest advisors and have worked for him for over 30 years. I mean, Joe Biden, like, he's just been, he's been around for so long that he has, like, a solid group of people around him that, like, they, they're his closest advisors. They're, like, he has a group of people, like, five, there's probably, like, five or six people that work for Joe Biden and have worked for him for 30 years. They go on TV sometimes. Uh, one of them is Ron Clay. Ron Clay? Ron Clay. Okay. He was the first chief of staff. He left. Uh, okay, before Jeff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and he also worked, Ron worked for uh, Biden when he was like a senator oh, for a super okay. long time. And then he worked for him when he was vice president. And uh -huh. then he worked for him, he worked for Obama for a little bit. He so he's been, he's worked yeah, with a lot he, of people. he helped run the killer campaign. So he's like one of them, there's a guy named Steve Rochetti. They're old friends. He's worked for Biden for like years. He's like a senior advisor at the White House. Anita Dunn, she is senior advisor. Uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, she's a senior advisor at White House. One of these advisors is a D.C. insider named Anita Dunn, who once named Chinese communist revolutionary Mao Zedong as one of her two favorite political philosophers in a speech to a high school graduation. Coincidentally, Dunn, a former managing director of prominent Democratic consulting firm SKDK, just so happens to have downplayed the significance of ACORN in a 2009 appearance on CNN. As you recall... I pose as a pimp, and with my colleague as a prostitute, exposed ACORN, which led to federal investigations and the congressional defunding of ACORN. Gene Sperling. Gene Sperling. Like he's an econ uh, economics guy. Okay. Uh, so that's four people? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, his sister. Huh? His, Biden's sister is like very important to him. Biden's sister? What's yeah. her name? Uh, Valerie. Valerie Biden? Yeah. She like runs the Biden Foundation oh. at uh, the University of Delaware. Oh. So all five of them were personally picked and appointed by Biden yeah. to basically run the show for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the president can't do everything. Like, yeah. So you have to delegate. Yeah. They're the people that run his different do you, Would you say those five people plus Jeff do more than the president himself? It kind of depends. Yeah. But they have ability to make decisions for the country without having to necessarily get the president's sign off. They, I mean, they have to get the president to sign off. But yeah, but like how often would the president say no? Yeah, exactly. Right? So if, if, if it ends up on his, the president's desk, then he'll probably sign off on it. If they put it on his desk saying, like, yeah. hey, we think you should do this, they'll probably sign off. So these people, these five people plus Jeff are really the ones running the show. Yeah. It's like that for everyone else. And most of the time, they're like, they're not people who have ever served in government office or like elected office but they're people that have worked in government so they, they were never elected by the voters yeah but they, but they you know they worked in the senate they for 30 can. years tyler robinson goes on to mention obama and hillary clinton still having close ties to the white house going as far as stating hillary influences policies and helps advise select members of the biden administration i feel like barack obama's still very like involved no he is yeah hillary was being interviewed mm -hmm. And she said, I still talk to the White House every day. Yeah, I'm just, she has people that are like super close to her that are still um, like senior people in the White House. 
working for President Biden. Yeah. So who is she talking to in the White House? Probably Neera Tandon. Who? Uh, the director of the Domestic Policy Council. Near what's his name? Neera Tandon. Okay. She uh, Oh, she. Yeah, she worked for Hillary for a while. And she now works for President yep. Biden. So you think she's one of the people that yeah. Hillary would talk to regularly? Yeah. To what? To influence the policies or like how Probably. much power? Yes. We're just get insight. Yeah. And I hope Hillary is still involved behind the scene because no, she is. Still, yeah. Okay. So she's talking to this one lady for a domestic. She does a lot of international stuff. With whom? Uh, they have like the Clinton initiative. Does they, she talk to anyone else besides this Nera lady? I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. On internal SBA policy and plans, Tyler Robinson discusses how the SBA wants to get into the lending business to provide loans to small businesses that cannot get loans from private banks. She had her congressional testimony and like, we didn't want her to mention that like, we would like to do direct funding to small businesses because the Republicans hate that. So you guys think that it's bad for her to advocate for direct funding? Well, if we bring it up, they're just going to yell at us. Okay. So what did you guys say instead? Or what, what would be the alternative to like that? Like the, the line we kept going back to is we're not allowed to do that. We don't want to compete with banks and financial institutions. But in reality, do you guys compete with banks? Uh, for the small dollar loans, we would like to, yeah. Are you guys competing? We're not allowed to. We don't have the budget to do it. Why do you guys want to compete with banks? For the same reason I was talking about. Not, we don't want to compete with banks. We, I, I think a way to expand access to capital for business owners is like those banks that want to, don't want to do like a $10,000 loan. They're going to get that loan from nowhere else unless they go put it on their credit card for super high interest rates or go to like someone who's going to do it at high interest rates where we, if Congress provided us the funding uh, and helped give us the collection agency, like the ability to collect, we would, we'd be fine with us. Like, yeah. So you guys would be acting like banks? A lender. Yeah. A lender. But that's, we can't do that. Why? We don't have the budget to okay. do it. Like you have to get it, that money has to be approved and we have to be, the legislature has to like approve the power to do that. I see. And there's no way they can. I mean, they could, that. but they won't. Because they like private business. Mm. OMG's hidden footage reveals Tyler Robinson's special advisor to SBA Administrator Isabel Guzman making important confessions about who is actually making decisions in the executive branch. These advisors are not merely political bureaucrats, but an increasingly insular group of insiders with their hands in every aspect of party politics in corporate America, from healthcare companies and investment firms to media outlets and tech companies. If you're on the inside, please send us a tip to our signal page, DM us on X or Instagram, and subscribe to On the Inside every Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned. I've had it with all my personal and private information being exposed and exploited by big tech and big government, so I'm joining my friend Eric Prince, and I'm switching to my new unplugged phone. Protect your privacy. Get your very own unplugged phone. Go to unplugged.com slash OMG. That's unplugged.com slash OMG. Take your privacy back. Unplugged.com slash OMG.